sa mga estudyante mo, brother, doon sa... Oo, oh, natuto lahat, ha? Si, ano? Puti yung mga tatay. Si Isaiah yung pinakabato. <laughs> Diyo, nagre-reklamo si Isaiah. Ayaw magsalita, eh. <laughs> Saan si Tita Lolit? Kina? Tita Lolit. Tita Lolit, wala pa. Wala pa. Tulog pa. Okay, I'll, I'll play the opening video now. At least uh, about a minute to wait for the others. reading from Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2, and 7 to 10. I'll give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I'll tell all of your wonderful deeds. I'll be glad and rejoice in you. I'll sing the praises of your name, O Most High. The Lord reigns forever. He establishes his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Let's bow down our heads and uh, just be in the presence of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now. And uh, just uh, confess whatever sins that you have. That way, we start, we start right. Our hearts are clean. Our minds are clean. Our soul is clean as we praise and glorify God at this time. Give you about one minute to do that. Lord our God, you are worthy of all praises. You are the God who never fails to keep his promises. You are the God who lifts up those who are weighed down. You are the God who provides for your children. Our desires to praise you as long as we live, inhabit in our praises as we gather today. Faithful Father, your love endures forever, never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. We lift up to you our speaker today, Brother Carlos de los Santos. May the message touch our hearts and bear much spiritual fruit. Grant him wisdom and cover him with your mighty protection 
as he delivers your message to us. As we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Holy Lord, everything we need is found in you. For those of us who come here feeling broken, bring restoration. For those of us who come here feeling weak, bring strength. For those of us who come here weeping, bring joy. For those of us who come here with doubts, bring faith. For those who come here shame, feeling shame, bring freedom. For those of us who come here burdened, bring rest. For those of us who come here feeling anxious, bring peace. Lord God Almighty, we praise you for who you are and what you have done. You are the healer, bring healing in this place. You are our righteousness, bring transformation in this place. You are the provider, increase our trust in you. You are the God who is with us, let us enter your presence. You are the Lord of hosts, bring victory in our struggles. You are the God of peace, bring comfort in our chaos. We lift up to you all the praises and petitions of our church and the whole world. And all of these things we ask for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Everybody say, Amen. Thank you, Brother Roland, for leading us in our opening prayer for today. Good morning. Welcome to Freedom in Christ Church. My name is Yoli, and it's great to see you all. Now I'd like to call on John to lead us in prayer this time to praise, worship, and glorify our wonderful God. Okay, Brother John. Good morning, FCC. Hello. Hello. Can, can everybody hear me? Is that okay? Okay, good. <clears throat> so just as a warning, um, if, you're, if you have the tendency to look at my screen while I worship or my video while I worship, the lights might turn off. My dad just installed a, a sensor light system in the basement where I'm sitting. So uh, blame my dad if, my, if the lighting suddenly just goes dark. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, see you high, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. See you high and lifted up, 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 holy. I want to see you holy, 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 holy. I want to see you. See you high. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy. the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King, yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything 
and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Oh, creation, I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living waters, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah, holy, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. For creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. I will adore along if you feel the need to. My Savior, my Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came in from the everlasting to the world we live. Father's only Son, cause you live and you die and you rose again on high and you open the way for the world to live again, hallelujah, for all you've done. My Savior. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same, because you came near. From the everlasting to the world we live, Father's only Son, and you lift you died, and you rose again on high, and you opened the way for the world to live again, hallelujah, for all you've done, hallelujah.
Cause you came near. Cause you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. Father's only son. Cause you came near. Cause you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. Father's only son. And you lived. And you lived. And you died. And you rose again on high. And you opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah. For all you've done. Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for this Sunday morning. We long and thirst for you. Give us hearts to worship you this morning, to glorify you this morning. We exalt you and lift you up. May you give Brother Carlos the words to speak. May you fill him with your Holy Spirit. Give him the strength to speak your word, speak your word graciously and lovingly, Lord. Give us open ears and open hearts to receive those words. God, we exalt you this morning. We pray this in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John, for leading us in praise and worship. Praise to the King of Kings. God, we adore you. We, we long for you. We want to see you. For you deserve the, all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Now, now it's time we worship our Lord through giving. It says in Luke 6.38, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. As we all still meeting online, you may mail your check to 4494. Actually, the full address is on the screen. And if you don't have a check, you may send an e-transfer to fccfcac at gmail.com. Let us be bold in our giving. Thank you. Also, um, let me see. Actually, um, as you can see in August, the total collection is 1,200. And uh, September 5, during picnic, total collection is 3,888. Wow, we thank you for your gener generosity. God is so good. Okay, let's bold in giving. Amen. Okay, let us pray for the tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, we praise for your goodness, your faithfulness, and your grace. We thank you for the time we all had together at the picnic yesterday. We all enjoy it, and it was great being together in person again. Father, we pray for the tithes and offering today. May we be bold in our giving, and may it be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading for today is from Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 20. Let's read together. It says, do not forget the Lord. Eight, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised 
on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Now then in your heart that as a man discipline his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in the obedience to him and revering him. The Lord God is bringing you into a good with brooks, stream, and deep springs gushing out in the valley and hills, and a land with wheat and barley, wines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you not forget the Lord your God. Fail to observe his law and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you build and settle down, gold increase and all you have is multiplied. Then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the Egypt out of the land of slavery. I think that's it. No, it's 20. Oh, wow. Oh, until 20. 15. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness that the thirsty and waterless land with its ben Benomos snake rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and to test you so that the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce the wealth and so confirm in his covenant, which is worth to your ancestors as it is today. 19. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow others God, other God and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nation the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord of the Lord your God. May God bless the reading of his word. Okay, as we kick off uh, September, our new team is devoted to God's word. We are blessed to have Brother Carlos de los Santos to deliver God's message for today. Let's give him a warm welcome. Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters. Uh, how, how, how does I come across? It, uh, do you understand it? Do you, do you hear me? Okay, thumbs up. Uh, <clears throat> glory to God for today's reading. And coming on from what Brother Roland had uh, inform me, I think it was five or six months ago that by September you will be doing uh, devo devoted uh, devoted charts or a series of uh, topics about being devoted. And uh, that immediately uh, reminds me of for those who had been uh, teenagers in the 60s and 70s of Everly Brothers. Uh, I don't know if you remember the song. Most of you are, are youngster, but uh, it's a good song by the Everly Brothers, Devoted to You. And that, that kicks into my head immediately. 
and it's a nice sub it's a nice topic to uh to discuss uh in this month especially the the weather now it's getting cold you things things now uh fall back even the hours to to what it was supposed to be and uh we had this is the time when people like it because we can see the the colors of nature and the wonders of nature and then it also worries some that the cold the cold days of fall and winter will keep us hold up again inside our home and uh as i am studying the word and doing doing some reflections uh the the <clears throat> the the spirit of god led me to the eighth uh chapter of Deuter Deuter deuteronomy sorry sorry brother and basically the highlight of this study is i i will read it uh, pardon me if i will be looking at my screen uh it's all the title is we can't live within the wildernesses but also we can we cannot live without the wilderness as we have read on the on 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 the eighth chapter of deuteronomy it was when the the israelites were were freed after being freed from slavery were sent out into the wilderness sometimes they call it uh woods or 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 forest in some in some kind of uh term remember remember said you're not out of the woods yet meaning you're still inside circling in 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 a place where you don't know where you're going so let's start uh we've seen from this from the from the reading that without god to support us during our wilderness experience how could we handle the pain and the suffering and the grief that it brings in hebrews uh chapter 3 verse 8 and i quote uh do not harden your heart hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness where your fathers tested and tried me and for 40 years saw my works see to it brothers that none of you has a wicked heart of unbelief that turns away from the living god and we knew what happened during those 40 years when they were uh doubting the the power of god when they when they tried to annoy uh <clears throat> annoy their leader no end and and they were saying if you can if you can if you can bring us back to egypt we will have we will have meat we will not be we will not be enduring the the mana that that you are giving us so you you can see you can you can see the 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 doubt in the the people's heart and that's why they it took them 40 years to be in that in that desert or in the wilderness uh israel had spent 40 years in 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 that in that lost lost place where snakes and scorpions abounds and the heat of the day doesn't cover you and when it's night I, I i i live in saudi arabia for years during winter time the cold there is not different from the cold that we have here but they are out there exposed in the elements wilderness is an unhit an inhabitable place where you cannot live it actually kills uh because the wells are not deep enough and the river the river bed when it rains 
it doesn't hold water for long. So you can see the water is scarce and without water, people die in the desert, people die in the wilderness. We're saying that right now, our life here in this world is like wilderness. We are living in the desert of suffering and, and challenges. Why? Because uh, our job, our family, our relationships, our prospects, our careers, opportunities, uh, they won't satisfy or fulfill our deepest thirst and longing. Just like the river bed, those things that we rely on or hold on to, like your job, your career, it, it, it won't bring you joy and happiness. Uh, like like uh, the river beds, they are, uh, who are, which are constant and steady things in your life, it will be taken away. River beds pertain to your health, uh, betrayals that you encountered, job loss, even sudden deaths. That happens in the wilderness that we live in right now. We know that those things are not permanent and they will be taken away. And when you're not ready, when you're not rooted in biblical wisdom and when it happened to you, you feel at a loss. Unless, but this is the, 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 <clears throat> the counter there. Unless something comes in from the outside, we're in the wilderness. Unless something comes in to support us in this world of our wilderness, we will not survive. We will die spiritually before we die physically. And you know what I mean? Because when, 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 when depression enters your life because of the loss of these things you hold in your hand, that you rely for your security, safety, and happiness, those jobs, the health, the health that you have, the family that you treasure, the relationships, your career, once they were taken away and you're not rooted in God's word, God have mercy because you will fall into depression. And when you fall into depression, and that's one no-no in, in, in being lost in the desert, you must stay focused. Because when, when, when you have panic attack every day, you will be running into, in circles. So let's move on. In, 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 uh, in summary, uh, what I have just said has been spoken in, in one of the plays in Macbeth. And I will, I will quote this. And, it's happen and, and this is real and, and it's really happening in our world. New widows, yung mga balo, new widows howl in, in tears. New orphans cry. New sorrows strike heaven on the face. This is reality in our wilderness. It, it's happening. People are in sorrow because they lost a loved one. People, uh, orphans cry because their parents died before their time. And, 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 and let's proceed. What is the application of this? As, as a church, like here in FCC, individually and corporately, how are you and I are influenced by this? By, by us living in this real world of challenges and suffering. How, how, how do we cope?
oh, 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 sorry, this is not a Bible study. <laughs> I'm throwing a question to you. So, so if we want to be shaped by biblical wisdom, that is, that is the word of God uh, in his book, if we are guided by, by, the, by his word, we will never be surprised by these constant sufferings. You may react, you may be bitter, you may feel vile, but you will be steady and unflappable, like, 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 a, like a ship with, with sail and a captain, that, that you know where you're going. You will be steady. However hard it hit you, it won't make you cynical and disillusioned. Why? Because we should look upon Jesus our Lord, the most perfect person who ever lived. Because when he came into this world, he had, he had to go into the wilderness by himself, led by the Spirit of God. Everybody, everybody does go into the wilderness, like I have said repeatedly. You and I, there's no exception. As Jesus himself entered into the desert. Uh, and that, that is covered in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 4. So if we are guided by the words of God, we will never be surprised by all these sufferings. And and you will do you and and when you and I are shaped and guided by the words of God in the Bible as early in life as possible, uh, you will do you will do the same thing as what Jacob did in Genesis 29 when he saw Rachel. Uh, I'll bring you to that that moment. When, when Jacob was searching for uh, his, his future wife and he was right there in the well and then suddenly Rachel came into the well with her, her, her shep, uh, shepherd of lamb because she was a shepherdess. And when Jacob took sight of Rachel, she was a very stunning and beautiful woman. Jacob immediately like any man who would who 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 get the first sight of a beautiful woman will have will have his heart beating hard raise your hand if you guys have experienced this i know because i i went when oh, because when 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 i saw alda the first time i think my heart skipped a bit or two so, so it, it, it's like that. It, it, it's like that. When, when, when in, 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 in our world, when we see, when we see a, a, a neighbor driving a car, like a BMW, a two-door, or, or, or something that, that came up on the ads that, uh, about a job where you're, you want to pursue your career, you will you will say like Jacob thought up upon seeing Rachel. Once I get my hands into that woman, once I get my my butt behind that behind that uh, steering wheel of that beautiful blue BMW, once I get that job that will lead me to success, I am complete. I am fulfilled. I am happy. And that's and that's how you and I, natural 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 people we are, who live in the bless, will will hold on to that that dream or that thing that we think will give us joy, but it's not, because like like previously what we have said, those those things that you hold precious precious in your heart. If they are taken away, 
what will happen to you? You will be at a loss. I, can I hear amen to that? Uh, <clears throat> nothing in this world could possibly bear the weight of our deepest hopes and joy. And when you feel constantly disillusioned and frustrated, when your boss let you down, your spouse push you over down the bed, your church ignores your talent, the car in front of you ignores the speed limit and is running 10, 10 kilometers below. When the other driver cuts right there in front of you, you will be disappointed because you're, you're naive or you're, 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 you're being ignorant of, of the reality of God to start with. You're not being shaped by God's wisdom. The Apostle Paul speaks about hardship of servants of God very clearly in 2 Corinthians 6, and I, and I quote, uh, Paul gave high regard when we are always sorrowful, grieving, yet always rejoicing. When we gather in the church, brothers and sisters, in worship and prayer, when somebody enters downtrodden or lonely or sorrowful or grieving, we just go on doing, going, going in our worship and prayer and the poor fellow will say halfway to the service, I hope the people will understand that I'm lonely. But when, when, when a church goer entered, entered into our service, rejoicing and celebrating, what's the reaction of the church people? That guy will be lifted up. That guy will be, will be joined in, in happiness with the group. I don't know if you're getting my point because we look, we look into celebrating with a successful guy, but we actually are almost blind to the sorrow of one church member having a difficult situation in life, if you know what I mean. So it, 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 that's, that's how fellowship should work in the church, that we, uh, we mourn with, the, with, with those in, in grief and we share their emotion. But uh, con continuing, everyone, ev every week when church people gathers, there's someone who is on the receiving end of some bad news, like somebody who lost his job, somebody got laid off, like what we have right now. Some, someone in the family is sick. People, people are in financial distress, even problem with kids. So a church who is meant to be sorrowful yet always rejoicing, how do we respond proactively in those situations? That's a main challenge of the church. We can survive without wilderness and this is the next topic that we will enter. That that be, uh, the previous one, we we uh, we cannot live in the wilderness. Now we are entering into the second phase. We cannot survive without wilderness. And what does it mean? The Lord God led the led the Israelites into the wilderness. Why? Uh, in, in Deuteronomy, it says to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands, all the vastness and dreadfulness, the difficulties, the challenges of the wilderness, the hunger and thirst. But despite, despite all this wilderness hardship, Uh, the people, the people of Israel, had been stubborn. They don't know that in the wilderness, 
we encounter God. In the desert of our suffering, that's where we feel the presence of God. That's where we, we, we sense our need of our Savior. Uh, people in the Bible encounter God in the wilderness. Who among them, Jacob encountered, encountered God in the ladder to heaven. When he wrestled with God. This is in Genesis 28 and Genesis 32. We studied that in our previous Bible studies. Moses encountered God in the burning bush and in Mount Sinai. This was uh, clearly described in the book of Exodus, in Exodus 3 and Exodus 19. Hagar, when he was thrown out by Sarah because of the, the family haggle between their son, Hagar meets God in the desert when the angel supplied them with the water to save his son. Elijah meets God in the wilderness right there in the cave when he was trying to flee from, 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 being, from being executed by, by Jezebel. Uh, John the Baptist in the New Testament met Jesus in the desert. So the wilderness, we cannot, we, cannot, we cannot survive without wilderness. Why? Uh, because in the wilderness, we encounter God. We meet Him. We know Him more. And we experience Him. We cannot expect to bloom you know, like, like the cactus, we cannot expect to bloom without, without the growth we would get from our wilderness experience. We want flower, we want grow to be a spiritual mature person without the sufferings and the hardship and the trials we are encountering each day. And, and we must learn from, from those experiences. What does it mean when we say that we, we bloom from our desert, desert experience? There were some survey, and, and, and I, I think this applied more to the Western, Western Hemisphere, that people are now begetting kids the natural way they want they want kids to be on the higher end they call it genetic engineering so so people like men had a sperm bank and women have their egg bank you know how much a sperm costs for a harvard man or women unbelievably expensive and they are all going for it because modern, moder, modern family, modern, modern, uh, modern uh, parents wants their, their, their kids to be like a Tesla or like, or like a, a, a spaceship that can go to the moon. They want, they want uh, excellence. And they don't know that nature is the one who's creating the magic. All the great people, most of the great people who had been successful in, 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 in the medical field, in the, in the physics field, and even in, in, in philosophy, they lost their parents before they are 12. They were 12 years old. So that, that, that means Nature creates geniuses. Magicker or ugly looks is sparse greatness and genius. Many famous people had lost, like I said, their parents before age 12. No greatness grows without trouble. And, I, and, I, and I'm glad that, that Brother Rick understands me. 
uh, God came to promised land, but when they saw its inhabitants and the problems they saw, they'll, they'll encounter by living there, decided on second thoughts to, re to return to Egypt. This is another aspect. They deemed that life, even in slavery, is better than life being free that God gave them. I will repeat it. I will repeat it again. Israel were slaves and were set free by God from Egypt, from slavery in Egypt. But when God came to the promised land, but when they saw its inhabitants and problem they saw, uh, but when, when the people of God came to the promised land in Cana and they saw its inhabitants and the problems that they saw they will encounter by leaving them, by leaving in them, they had second thoughts and decided, and they spoke to Moses, why bring us here? We, we, uh, take, take us back to Egypt, where our life is better than what, we, what, what, what uh, holds, holds the life here. They deemed that life there, even in slavery in Egypt, is better than life being free that God gave them. In short, and listen to this, brothers, they are legally free from slavery, but they have a big problem with responsibility. They were freed from slavery, but they cannot take responsibility being free. Other, in other words, God took them out of slavery, but the slavery had not been taken out of them. I'll repeat it again. God took them out of slavery, but the slavery in them had not been taken out. So, so mentally, they are still thinking they are slaves. So God has to plunge them back into the wilderness for 40 years. And that is where, in that wilderness, that is where the slavery was taken out of them. So they're ready to be free people after 40 years. When we, brothers and sisters, be became Christians, being born again, accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, God sees us, his very own son, in Jesus Christ, and even called us his own son, and says he is well pleased. In John 3, uh, verse 5, uh, Jesus uh, speaking, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh is born of flesh, and the Spirit is born of Spirit. Yet, just like Jesus and the Israelites, who God freed from slavery out of Egypt, we too will be led into our wilderness, into this world of, of, of confusion and hardship. The real physical world we live in now, this is our wilderness. And just like our Lord, the Word of God and His Spirit must be our beacon our, our, uh, our guiding light, uh, our, our guiding light to cover us in defense. In Matthew 4, it says here, man does not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Again, in Matthew, in, in Matthew 4, verse 7, do not put the Lord God to the test. And in Matthew 4, verse 10, worship the Lord your God and serve him, him only. All these three verses are the defense, the defenses that Jesus put up with against the temptation of the devil. When he said, turn this stone into bread. And he said, no, it's, it, man, man does not live on bread alone, but 
through every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And then he said, he challenged him to jump from the hill. And he said, no, don't put, your, put, don't put God to the test, and so forth and so on. And he said, worship me, and I will give you all you see in this world. You will be the king in this world. And he said, no, worship the Lord, our, your, your God, and serve him only. So these are the, 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 the defenses that Jesus put up with to block off and submit to the temptation of, Satan, of the devil. In our wilderness experience, which is happening in real time, right here, right now, as real as, real as taking its breath in a minute, as real as inhaling oxygen every minute, it is real. The very things we hold on tightly, like I said, like the jobs, the career, and so forth, all of this will be taken away. And yet, when we are guided by the words of God through Jesus Christ, we will find our rest in Him. We will enjoy the safety and comfort, and comfort uh, on His bosom arms. Because when we submit Himself, because when He submit Jesus, when He submit Himself to the will of the Father, by dying in the cross for us, Jesus Christ took it all, our sins, our inequities, to give us his righteousness. And that's how we receive our redemption. So whether you are right now in your wilderness experience, whether people would say you're not out of the woods yet, struggling in fear and apprehension, let us all submit to his words of truth. Think of the fleeing Israelites at the edge of the expanse right there by the Red Sea with the, with the Egyptian, with the full force of Egyptian army out to kill them. What happened? God split the waters of the Red Sea. God made a way for them to cross the Red Sea. Think about Job's wilderness when all his possession, his sons and daughters were taken away from him. Even his treasure and his wealth were all gone, were all burned down. God made a way, God made a way for him. In his deathbed, he was abandoned by friends even cursed by his wife, cursed by friends. But God restored him many times over. Think about that. Think about Joseph, who was sold as a slave by his brothers, even in prison. But then God made a way for him. Uh, God made a way for Joseph. He became famous, the prime minister, who was wielding power that saved people from famine during those times. Think about that. And now think about our own wilderness right now that, that we, are, we are enduring. All the hassles, all our heartaches, and reflect how far you and I have endured until now. Remember, joy, joy in Christ Jesus does not go away when circumstances go bad. I'll repeat it again. Joy in Christ Jesus does not go away when circumstances go south or go bad. Because joy in Christ is based on what he has done for us. It is, like, it is like a furnace that we have in the basement or the heater that we call here with a thermostat. When the temperature goes cold outside and you know what happened? 
the the thermos the 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 thermostat makes the heater kicks in and it's same thing with what happened in in our life the more cold it is outside the more suffering we have the hotter our hope gets the more the more it's cold outside the more difficulties we have when we are rooted in god's word our hope becomes stronger it becomes hotter we pray what we will do during those times uh we 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 pray harder we worship more we read we read the word of god consistently we fellowship with our brothers and sisters and that's what we do we draw love from the fellowship that we have we draw light spiritually in ways that we have never done before in the midst of our wilderness god remember this god when he created this world he did not create a desert what he created is the garden it's evil and sin that created the wilderness and someday remember these brothers and sisters and what is what god promised to us and someday in the future god will create a new heaven and a new earth that is in in isaiah in the book of isaiah verse uh book of isaiah uh chapter 35 and that this desert world will bloom but till the time god will use but until that time god will use this wilderness experience we have to make you and i bloom to make you and i grow spiritually we cannot live within the wilderness and we also cannot live without wilderness i'll, I'll do it faster I'm, I'm running out of time how do we make sure that we use deserts that we don't waste our sorrows so we bloom because of them in the book of deuteronomy where 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 we read earlier in verse 5 so know in your heart that just as a man disciplines his son so the lord your god disciplines you through the people though the people in knew this in their hearts but the people didn't know it fully or aware of the truth yet and that's why they they, they went stubborn they grow stubborn this idea in exodus in matt and in the book of matthew god sending you and me in the wilderness of the desert where the sonship being a child of god comes up in in the in the same book of deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 31 and it says and i quote and in the wilderness where the lord your god carried you as a father carries his son all the way but by which you traveled until you reach this place the wilderness as the bible has told us that we finally see that god is our father when good father and mother sees when good and father sees the weakness of his children i'm talking to you parents when you see a child of yours is weak in some points like like uh like being childish childish even though they're grown up when you see seeds of problem of integrity or or discipline or lack of wisdom what do we do we test them just like god is testing us in the wilderness what we do we we put some difficulties in their path and maybe they don't most of the time they they don't like that because we put curfew you. you should be here before 10. perhaps we're drawing some privileges but this 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 punishment is not teeth for that it's not revenge revenge uh, in nature never retributed or revenging we are just bringing them 
in their life enough pain. We are bringing them enough pain to keep them from far greater pain later in life. You know what I mean? Small dose of punishment, but never, never large enough for them to be to be uh, to be treated abusively in abuse. So I, you and I know as parents, when you have children where one is weak or timid or dependent or failing, when one of them is like that, one of your kids is like that, our love for them, for that weak child, intensifies. We don't rebuke them for what they are, but we care and nurture them to be strong from their weaknesses. This is the Bible saying, you got to know this in the bottom of your hearts, the depths of your being, that when you are going into difficulty, suffering, and pain, God's love is absolutely unreal. When all kinds of prayers have clearly answered, but he doesn't. When kind of things that you're relying for have been taken away from you. It's impossible to believe that God is a father who is loving you in this and loving you through this. And that's what we got to know at the bottom of your heart. That he is our father in the midst of these sufferings. And if you know that, and you can rely on that, and you can draw from that truth, listen to this, then everything changes. Then the wilderness blooms because it makes us strong. You may say it's great, it's a great thought, it's great encouragement. But how do we know that? Because it doesn't feel like he is my father when I'm going through those difficult times, you will say. He has abandoned me. He led me to, to deal with these trials. But remember this. When Jesus Christ was baptized right there in the desert by, by John the Baptist in Matthew 3, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. Suddenly, the, the, the heavens were open and the Spirit of God dawned on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. But what happened after that? What happened after that? When, when the Godfather said, Jesus Christ, he is the one, he is my son, I am well pleased on him. He just said that. But what happened after that? What happened after that? When God said, he is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, this is my favorite son. What happened? Immediately, he was sent out to the desert, to the wilderness. And you know what happened there? The temptation of Christ. He was there thirsty. He was there, he was there in hunger. He was there enduring the pain for 40 days. I am we thirsty and tempted by the devil. But you know what he's saying? God, God, his father, I love you into the desert. Have you been betrayed? And this is my question to you, brothers. Have you been betrayed? Have you been betrayed? Have you been lonely? Have you been tempted? Are you penniless? I hope not. Are you mocked or jeered at? Are you facing erosion or death of your body? So Jesus endured that too. He endured the betrayal. He endured death. He endured the mockery and the jeering. So is he. And so are we. If you see him suffering, if you see Jesus suffering like this, 
as only an example, it's not a comfort for you. If you see Jesus suffering those trials, suffering those temptations as an example, it's, it is not for our comfort. You will say, I, I, I am also enduring that. But think about this, brothers. What if he is in the wilderness for you? I'll say that again. What if Jesus Christ was there in the wilderness for you and I, for us? That's what you and I have to see if you will understand the fatherly love of God. And for that, his sorrows are what it takes for us to bloom. I will repeat it again. If you see Jesus Christ suffering in the desert, in the wilderness, as only an example of what he endured, it's not a good comfort for us. But think about this suffering that he endured, that, that what he endured in the wilderness is for us. Is for our redemption. Is for our salvation. That's what we have to see. If we will, if we would like to understand the fatherly love of God, and that for His sorrows, all the His suffering He endured there, are what it takes us for us to bloom in the desert. He is there for you. I'm meaning Jesus. On the cross, you see thorns and thistles in his flesh. Thirst by thirst, and not only physical, but he is thrown there in the cross into the ultimate hollow of, of a wilderness. He's howling in pain. He's howling in thirst. But he's, he is right there on the cross for us, for you and me. But Jesus say you're not, when, when Jesus was there in, in his last breath, he was, he was screaming at God the Father. He said, you're not carrying me. You, you have abandoned me. He was saying that. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Because he was getting what we deserved. He was paying for our penalty right there in the cross. He was getting the pain and the suffering we all deserve. He was paying our penalty by his life. And, and, and finally, that is the solution. When you go, when you and I go into this wilderness, that's how we are able to trust Jesus. That's how you are not able to give up on God. You're being betrayed, losing health, losing financial security. I don't, we don't know the reason for these things. But we know the reason that it, that it is not. It can't be that he does not love us. It can't be that he does not care for us. Because we have seen him went there in the cross of wilderness for our salvation. We have a God who came down in, hob in horrible suffering for us. Of course, He loves you and me. He could not have done what He has done for us if He didn't care for us. And secondly, the cross is not the only way to trust God. The cross is not the only way to trust God in our wilderness. But it is also a way to trust yourself. Because when we are in the middle of wilderness, we blame ourselves. We blame our faults. We, 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 we become guilty because we, we fall short of what, what, what we have to do. No, it's not. It is because Jesus Christ lost his sonship. It is because 
Jesus Christ sacrificed his sonship so that you and I could have the adoption of sonship that we don't deserve. Finally, when Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, he quoted, no, this one is good. Uh, that's, and finally, as closing, that's how we must deal with our life in the woods right now. Let's plunge into the love of our Lord. In his, in Jesus, in Jesus, uh, enduring hardship on the cross. That is, that is only the time when we will sur survive in this wilderness. When we will inherit the promise of eternal life. The promise of salvation and redemption. All for the glory and all for the honor. All for the worship in the powerful name of our son Jesus Christ. And let us all say thank God. And amen, and amen, and amen. Glory to God, brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you, Brother Carlos, for... Very long. <laughs> that wonderful message.